Welcome back everyone. So now this last section is predator prey equations and the situation at hand is that we have one species, the predator, feeds on the other species, the prey, while the prey lives on the other feed, as in the prey is using, you know, grass or other resources that we don't care to model in our equation to survive. And so to denote this, x is going to be our prey and then y will be our predator. So there's a couple of assumptions that we need to make in this model. If there's no predator, then the prey grows at a rate proportional to the current population. Therefore, dx dt, the rate of growth, or the rate at which the population is changing is equal to a times x, where a is equal to zero, or a is greater than zero, sorry, so it's positive in, uh, increase in population when y is equal to zero, so when there's no predator. The absence of a prey will mean that predator dies. So the assumption is that the predator can only eat the prey. And so that means that the change in population of the predator is going to be equal to some minus c constant times y, where c is greater than 0, and then x is equal to 0, aka the prey uh, population is extinct. When predator and prey meet, the predator increases in population while the prey decreases. That makes sense. Whenever they get into uh, a fight or the prey wants to survive, clearly the prey cannot feed on the predator, and so they often lose that fight. And the number of encounters are proportional to the product of their populations. So that's twofold, as in the growth of the predators of the form dxy, where d is greater than zero and then the growth of the prey is of the form minus bxy, where b is greater than zero. So clearly, the predator is going to grow while the prey is going to decrease in population. This leads us to this model. So dx dt, the rate at which the prey's population is changing, is equal to ax, so positive if nothing is happening to it, minus bxy, the times that it meets the uh, predator, which can also be written as x times a minus by. Same thing for uh, predator, the or well not the same thing, but it's closely related to the top equation. Is that the rate at which the predator's equation, or predator's population changes, is minus c y plus d x y, which again is, can also be written as y times minus c plus d x. And just for your knowledge, this is these are known as the Lotka Volterra equations. Uh, very popular in uh, dynamics and the study of nonlinear ODE. And so all that's left to do is to do a problem to illustrate what the face coordinates for these kind of look like. So great, let's get started. Uh, again, recommended that you multiply these out. So the top one would be equal to x minus one half xy. The bottom would equal minus one fourth y plus one half xy in order to calculate your Jacobian. Uh, as always, find critical points, right? So, again, I'm just going to give them to you. Feel free to calculate them on your own. Um, the first critical point is going to be 0, 0, right? That can be obvious from that first case that you would probably do. And then the other critical point is when you look at that last case, uh, 1 minus 0.5y and uh, in conjunction with minus 1 fourth plus half x. And that will give you the critical point of 0 0.5 and 2. And these are your only two critical points. And there is, it's typically two critical points for a lot of Volterra equations. So if you only get two, that's, that's probably a good sign. Great, let's find our Jacobian. Again, calculate this on your own time. This will be, and this, I mean, this is good practice, you know, 1 minus 1 half y. 0.5y minus 0.5x and then minus 0.25 plus 0.5x. Great. And then hopefully you've done enough now that you know just plug in your critical points, right? So j of 0, 0 is going to give me 1. 0, 0, minus 1 fourth, right? Uh, clearly, lambda 1 is going to equal 1. Lambda 2 
will equal minus one fourth. And then I'll give you eigenvectors as well. So v1 in this case will be one zero. And then v2 will equal zero one. Cool. Okay. And then let's do that other critical point. J of zero point five two is going to give me zero one minus one fourth zero. Again, yeah, that still looks like a nine. Cool. Uh, and then you'll see that this will give me lambda one two is equal to plus or minus i over two. Oh, I forgot to calculate stability. So for the first one, for the origin, uh, clearly it's a saddle, right? So we'll write that up here. And then for down here, plus or minus i over two, that is going to be a stable center. And now, um, you may be wondering, like, the real part is zero in this case. How can you say anything about this? Uh, you're right. You are very right. I cannot really say anything about this. All I can do is hand wave to and say, uh, based on predator-prey physical models and by using uh, Lyapunov functions, which is something that's not covered in this course, you'll see that this is a stable center. Um, but you're right, I can't, I can't show you why that is. Just know that predator prey typically has a stable center. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that not 2552 doesn't doesn't teach that. But again, it, it, like Lyapunov stability and, and whatnot is an advanced topic, so I I understand why they don't teach it. Um, but anyway, cool. So then after that downer, face portraits. Again, we only care about first quadrant. So we have our critical point at zero zero, and then we have our critical point at one half two which is right here. Yeah, imagine that's drawn a scale. Uh, zero, zero is a saddle. It is asymptotically stable in the y direction. So we only care about it over there, which means it's unstable in the x direction. Cool. And then it's a stable center. Now, without you knowing clockwise or counterclockwise, it has to adhere to what's going on right here. So it's going to be like this, as in, uh, uh, what, what is that again? Clock, uh, counterclockwise, yeah, sorry about that. I don't know why I thought about that for too long. Counterclockwise, and uh, yeah, you can draw them in as many as you'd like, as many as your heart desires. And that's it. Um, basically, for this model, typically the origin is a saddle, and there's a first quadrant point that is a stable center. If you think about it uh, from a physical standpoint, this means that as long as we don't start with an extinct population of predator and or prey, which is the, uh, the so let's say that you start on with a positive y, right? And we said that y was our predator, right? If we have no prey, if we're on the, on the y-axis, then it makes sense that we're going to go to zero, zero, because the predator is going to die because there's no prey to feed on, and the prey, there's none to begin with, so it's going to be zero, zero. On the other hand, if we start on the x-axis, as in there's no predator, but there's uh, some number of prey, then they're just going to grow and grow and grow, assuming no limit on carrying capacity, because there's no predator to decimate them, right? Any other case, it's just going to uh, center and uh, go around a certain point in which there would be um, kind of a slight stability at that point, which is in this case one half two, but to reach that is obviously not possible, um, at least if you're coming outside of it because it's not asymptotically stable. And so, yeah, that's what it means. It, that'll, there will be closed curves about a stable critical point in this scenario. So, great. That was the, I guess, the biological analysis part of this course. But anyway, uh, we're done with chapter seven. Great. So now we move into the final chapter, which is chapter five, and that is the Laplace transform. And uh, just like a quick fun fact, I guess, like 
uh, Laplace transform was actually the reason I wanted to become a differential equations TA. So hopefully I can give you a lot of insider tips and, you know, give you very methodical, very clear uh, ways on how to do those kind of questions. So stay tuned for that.